Hi, welcome to the 14-day weather forecast. March and April were both wet months in much of UK. So, is May set to continue in the same vein, or will things change? And what about the prospects for the Coronation Bank holiday weekend? As usual, I'm going to begin by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 2nd. And at the outset, there's a good deal of dry weather around. As I run the sequence, that remains the case in the short term, but through Thursday and Friday, it's all changed. Disturbances push up from the southwest. The Coronation Bank Holiday weekend prospects are not looking great. This is the GFS at 18 GMT, Saturday the 6th of May. Rain affecting much of the UK, some heavy bursts there down to the southwest. But at this range, the details are uncertain, and I will take a look in a little bit more depth later on. Continuing, it stays changeable or unsettled through Sunday, Bank Holiday Monday, and Tuesday with the Atlantic in the ascendancy. Areas of low pressure bringing showers or longer spells of rain. Not fantastic through week one if it's dry, warm and sunny conditions that you're hoping for. Here's a jet stream animation which really shows things quite nicely. Remember that for warm, dry and sunny weather the jet stream really needs to be heading northwards towards Iceland with the UK on its southern side. As I run this, what we see is the jet stream strengthens and it takes quite a southerly track. It's pushing into uh, southern France there by the end on Wednesday the 10th of May. The UK firmly on its cool northern side. Well, two metre temperatures therefore are not going to be fantastic through the first week. I'll just bring up a few charts to illustrate them. This shows forecast maximums on Wednesday the 3rd. Not much variance across the UK, 12s, 13s, 14s, 15s. But overnight temperatures are higher than they have been. The nights now are very, very short, of course. The frost risk rapidly receding, particularly in the southern half of the UK. Minimums here on Friday morning, double figures over much of England and Wales, still colder there in Scotland. Friday afternoon, maximums now a little bit higher, 16, 17, 18s cooler there still in Scotland. If the sun shines, it will actually feel quite warm, but nothing exceptional. Now, what about the Coronation Bank holiday weekend? As I've already suggested, the indications are that things are going to be quite mixed. The maximum temperature charts here are for Saturday the 6th of May. The one on the left from the GFS, on the right it's for UK Met Office UKV model. There are differences between the two. The UKV is pointing towards a possibility of 21 Celsius being reached there just in uh, southeastern England, East Anglia. So quite warm if that's correct. GFS has maximums a few degrees lower. Although, with that said, it's still not too bad, particularly relative to the average in the northern half of the UK. And what's really driving the temperatures to a large degree is the extent of rain. The GFS chart here on the left, 15 GMT, on Saturday shows showery rain covering much of the UK. In fact, there's some real downpours there in southern and central England, quite possibly thundery. But the UK V model has showers in places, Northern Ireland there, Scotland, Northern England, but the more persistent rain on the UKV is restricted to the southwest. So very much a case of uh, following the short range forecast as the time approaches because the details aren't pinned down yet. But here the uh, maximum temperature charts are for Sunday, GFS again on the left. Now on the right it's the UK Met Office global model because the UKV doesn't reach out this far. Values once more, not too bad really in southern and central regions there, 17s, 18s, but nothing exceptional. And once more, there's quite a bit of rain around, showers or longer outbreaks for GFS on the left. Much of the UK seeing rain at this point, some heavy bursts there in Northern England, Northern Ireland. 
the UK Met Office Global model also has a fair amount of rain over the UK, but there are drier periods as well, and the rain doesn't look to be as heavy. In part, the differences I think on these two charts are to do with the resolutions of the respective models. The GFS is slightly lower resolution, I think, the global model here, and so it does have this tendency to show rainfall being more widespread than actually turns out to be the case. That's one of the reasons for it anyway. Going forwards to Bank Holiday Monday, maximum temperatures, 16s, 17s, 18s, 19s, according to the GFS in southern and central counties, cooler as you head northwards, and the same sort of general pattern is shown on the right there by the UK Met Office global model. Once more, though, it's really rainfall, cloud cover, which will be the determining factors of the maximum temperatures, which can be expected. And GFS, again, showing, showing showery rain over much of Britain, and there are some heavy bursts there into Northern Ireland. The UK Met Office Global has showery rain over much of the UK. Taking more together, therefore, the summary, it's quite unsettled. There could be thundery showers around, some longer outbreaks of rain too, but also drier and brighter periods. And where those develop, it may well feel quite warm. I think people's perceptions could vary quite a lot for Coronation Bank holiday weekend. It's really going to depend on what it's like in your locality. Some may recall it as being not too bad, whilst others think, oh, it was such a disappointment. There was lots of rain, even thunderstorms. Watch the short range forecasts, as I say, because the details still need to be firmed up. In general terms, here are the rainfall charts for days 0 to 5 from the ECM model on the left, the GFS on the right. It's a relatively dry start, of course, as I showed on the sequence. But by five days ahead, all parts of the UK have seen some rain. The highest totals there tending to be in the west. Moving forwards to the 0-10 day period, quite a wet picture actually being shown by both of these computer models. In fact, values across all parts of the UK really are significant by this point. So, towards the end of the first week, had the deterministic models compared to each other? The GFS, Tuesday the 9th of May, is showing quite an unsettled picture. High pressure there to the southwest from the Azores may be wanting to try and build a little bit, but it's really not getting there at this stage. The Canadian model has the high pressure a little bit further north. It's still a changeable scene over the UK, but there are indications there of high pressure wanting to start to play its part. The German Icon model, conversely, has a high pressure significantly further southwest low pressure really dominating the scene, and the European ECM, also quite changeable, high pressure nudging up, but generally there is a risk there of showers or even longer periods of rain. And finally, the UK Met Office Global Model, similar to the ECM. Taking them all together, it's a changeable picture towards the end of the first week, there's the risk of showers, longer spells of rain, not any indications at this stage of a prolonged period of dry and warm weather. But will things change as we head through the second week? Of course, at this range, it's all about the trends and the probabilities, not specifics. Starting with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Air temperatures across the top, the thick black line, the 30-year norm is bisecting most of the runs in the ensemble really throughout the second week, very close to average. There's not much to say. There are a few runs going for significantly above average and a few dipping a little bit lower. But taking them in aggregate, it's a very, very average outlook. Rainfall, the number of spikes across the bottom. Well, through the first week there, Coronation weekend, there are more spikes perhaps than there are later on, but still the risk of rain remains throughout the forecast period, just perhaps decreasing a little bit, as I say, through week two. 
temperatures down to the ground level, the two meter values. The light orange dominating these columns, 16s to 20s. There's a little bit of a darker orange for warmer runs and some yellow for 11 to 15s. I would say temperatures are not going to be a big talking point through the second week. Not particularly cold by any means, but not especially warm either. The big factor is going to be the amount of rain and cloud cover, or if you want to take a more optimistic spin, the amount of sunshine. Up to Manchester and the air temperature profile, very similar to the London one. Across the bottom, a number of rain spikes. I think there are a few more showing up through the second week from the were on the London one, but the general theme is very similar. Two metre temperatures. The light yellows are dominant in these columns. Forecast maximums are between 11 to 15. Cooler as you head northwestwards. I think it just really indicates that very average picture. Up to Glasgow to continue the journey northwestwards. Very similar across the top. Once again, very close there. The um, ensemble mean and most of the individual runs within the ensemble are staying very close to a 30 year average. As I say, there are a few going up significantly above it and a few dipping below it, but all in all, it's pretty much spot on to the norm. Along the bottom though, there are probably more spikes here than there were on the Manchester and London plots. It's a wetter outlook and more unsettled theme. Possibly taking that into account with the Manchester and London plots would suggest that high pressure is starting to be centred more to the south or southwest and we're losing that northern blocking high pressure to the north of the UK which has been present for a while. The two metre temperatures for Glasgow, light yellow is dominating, 11 to 15 daytime maximums through week two according to this. Taking a look at the bigger picture, the GEFS mean pressure plot for Friday the 12th of May, it suggests that high pressure may be starting to build northeastwards out of the Azores, but at this point it's not having a great deal of influence on the UK's weather. A very similar story with the ECM ensemble, the high pressure there ridging northwards. Going back to the GEFS data and the mean surface level pressure data table. So this one's going forward through time through the second week and it's for York. It's fairly nondescript. There is lots of yellow in the daily columns. Those are runs forecasting between 1011 and 1025 millibars. The average at this time of year is around 1016. So some of the yellow is a little bit above and some a fraction below the norm. Also though, there is quite a lot of green continuing to show up. So that's used to indicate runs forecasting between 996 and 1010 millibars, so lower pressure. If it's dry, warm and settled conditions you're hoping for, then you would be looking for more of this orange to be showing up because that's used to indicate runs which forecast pressure to be between 1026 and 1040. There's only a little showing up there just a few runs going for a high pressure dominated scenario. Quite mixed, I think. So to summarise, week one, it starts dry in much UK, but through Thursday, it begins to turn more unsettled. Thundery showers or outbreaks of rain push northwards across all parts of the UK through the following days. Therefore, it's looking mixed for the Coronation Bank holiday weekend. There could be quite a lot of local differences though, and the details need firming up, so keep an eye on the short range forecasts. Week two, that unsettled pattern continues, although later on there are some indications of it beginning to turn drier in the south. Temperatures not likely to be a big talking point, probably quite close to the average. So uh, there we have it. The mixed weather looks set to continue as we head through the first half of May. Showers, longer spells of rain, and the potential in places at least for thundery downpours. No sign yet either of anything notably warm. 
Well, regardless of that, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then please consider hitting the like button below. Also, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Thanks for watching now. Bye.